The Virginia case is considered the most well-kept secret in the military circles of Brazil. This film, there's so much going on. People in 1996 in Virginia, Brazil, residents around the city seen a wingless craft going down, billowing smoke. Uh, a few days later, some schoolgirls were on their way home and they seen what they believed to be a, a being. And shortly after, the military descended on it. Now, your film goes into it in greater detail. It has uh, people who were there at the scene there's just so much going on that even you didn't believe in this story when you first heard about it. So uh, now you've dedicated an entire film to this uh, case. What changed in your mind? It's a great question. And you're the first one to really give a great, pretty good, uh, accurate synopsis there. Um, I didn't believe it. And it's, it's from a unique situation because I make documentaries on ufos i've been doing it for nearly 30 years so i heard about this case just a couple years after it happened but i refused to look into it i heard about it through a very good friend of mine in the late 90s early 2000 probably like probably 99 my you know i i laughed i, sh I laughed it off and i and that's coming from a guy who believes in the phenomenon a guy who's making documentaries on the phenomenon so I know what I'm up against with the general public. I don't expect anyone to believe me because I didn't, right? But the more I dug, the more I uncovered, the more I went, wait a minute. My God, I really believe these people. And I'm digging for them. They're not coming after us. And my partner, Marco Leal, co-producer, he's had boots on the ground for over 15 years on this case. I've been investigating it. I've been there four times for since 2011, 2011. Um, more people coming forward, more people willing to come forward. And, and eventually everyone's got a little piece of the puzzle. The whole town of Virginia knows about it, okay? The whole town either has a friend or a cousin or saw something firsthand or saw the military blockades or knew the doctor who worked on the guy who died or, you know what I mean? Like everybody, you go downtown Virginia and you, we had little signs and we were attracting people within an hour or two. We had 15 or 20 different witnesses that were either directly or indirectly involved with the case. It, it's it, it, That case, I'm convinced, and I'm staking my career on it, that happened. That happened. So just based on your own perspective, who are you making this movie for? Because even among the UFO hardcore believer community, it's so divided. So yeah. I have a two-part question here is, uh, what do you expect someone who maybe doesn't believe in the phenomenon, what do you think they'll take away from this film? And what should someone who's a hardcore UFO believer, what will they get out of the film? Well, the hardcore, the hardcore UFO believers have little to no information on this case. There's been very, very few articles, in fact, maybe one article in the United States that was done in 1996 in the Wall Street Journal. Um, uh don't think there were ever, I, you know, I did, I did something back in 2011, 2012, an eight minute, 10 minute, 15 minute episode with National Geographic. We just skimmed the surface on it, but there's been very little reporting on this case. And we dig in on this one. I mean, we find witnesses that were directly involved, allegedly with the transportation of these creatures, people that were at the military base. We checked all their credentials, the doctors who worked on one doctor who allegedly took x-rays of the creature under under the um, command of, of the military base. Um, I want to bring light to what I consider the most compelling UFO case in modern history, certainly since Roswell. What do I want the mainstream to come back out with? raise an eyebrow and think, you know what? This might've just happened. I think we've done our job. For sure. And, but I, uh, I have a question. I have a question, if you don't mind. Go for it. I have your, your, your audience. If it did happen, if, don't, I'm not saying it happened or it didn't happen, but if it did, if a UFO did crash, beings were recovered alive, how significant of a story would you give this? 
that's what I'd like you to ask yourselves. I can't think of a more significant story in modern history myself. Well, that leads to another one of my questions in that, like, what would it take to crack a case like this? Because we're in this uh, fake news era where people just don't believe facts anymore. You could sh go show people an alien walking around on video and half the people aren't going to believe it. Like, have we passed the point where there could be some sort of mainstream disclosure and it would be accepted? I think we, you know, I last year I was reading articles in the New Yorker and the New York Times talking about crash debris and bodies recovered. I never in a hundred million years thought that I would ever hear that being reported and talked about amongst high level government officials, but that's no longer the case. They are talking about, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I talk about the New Yorker, New York Times, high level government officials talking about recovered materials and bodies. Now, do they confirm it and show one? No. Are we, with documentaries like The Phenomenon and, and Moment of Contact and others, are we forcing the government's hand? Are we educating the population a little bit so that uh, it's putting pressure on those uh, that have this information to uh, encourage more government transparency? I think so. I think so. And I think that uh, it's harder to lie to an informed public. Um, you know, they dismissed Roswell as a weather balloon. Uh, you know, it's taken, what, 75 years, but uh, it's almost a household name now. And I don't know what the percentage of the population believes it, but there's a large percentage of the population that believe that 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 that, that might very well have happened just the way they initially had described it happening. In other words, a, a, an, an alien vehicle crashed and there were bodies recovered. And I'm hoping that the same thing will happen with moment of contact, but much sooner. So a lot of the people you speak to in the film were very reluctant to go on camera. You interview a few individuals who mm -hmm. um, their faces are blurred out or their backs are to the camera. Um, have you been in contact with them since recording the film and has anything new come to light and how do they feel about the film's rollout? Well, the film's coming out on the 18th, so it's not out yet. It's coming out the 18th of October. We have a premiere in Los Angeles on the 17th of October at LA Live, uh, if there's anybody listening, LA Live at Regal downtown um, at 7 p.m. So the film hasn't come out yet. Some people have, I've had some people watch the movie and say, my gosh, you know, it's unfortunate that the doctor who allegedly took x-rays or the guy that allegedly drove this creature around um, wouldn't reveal their identity overtly. And I'm saying, he, you know what, we're gonna t we, we have vetted these witnesses and I'm gonna take what we can get and let each and every piece of the puzzle, you put all those pieces of the puzzle together and you get the bigger picture of what, what happened. Um, I don't know if I answered your question correctly or not there, but- No, that makes sense. If I didn't, yeah. So I've been watching your films, like your work goes back to the 90s. And mm. there's one thing I'm really curious about, just the way human beings are wired. We have a, a BS detector. And it's just the fact that the more we hear something, no matter how out there it is, it starts to become a little less wild to us. So if someone says the sky is green, at first it's like, the sky is blue, like you're full of it. But after the 50th time, people start to kind of change their, their opinion and be a little bit more like, maybe there's something to this. So you're working in this world that's just so steeped in mythology and rumors and hearsay. What are your checks and balances? Like what keeps you grounded from just spiraling down a conspiracy theory rabbit hole? So I actually go to location on all the cases that I investigate with the idea that I don't believe this happened pretty much. And I need to be convinced. I think of myself as presenting a case to the jury. You can't do it with any one piece of evidence. Photograph it, they're going to say it was faked. But when you have a preponderance of compelling te testimony in an entire town, both military, civilian, police, fire department, the mayor, uh, women, men, boys, do you know what I mean? You have to come to the conclusion that something truly extraordinary took place. It's not like, like I said earlier, it's like you have all these witnesses that saw some aspect of this case, this incident, and you put those together. 
and you do it, I, I do it with full transparency in the field and you meet, I don't, I'm not putting words in these people's mouths. They're telling their experience, what they saw. They're not coming after us. We're going after them. The level of work that's gone into developing enough trust uh, with these individuals has taken uh, over well over a decade. And, and um, people could say whatever they want, you know, I've got a reputation. I've been at it for 30 years. I stand behind all my documentaries. Uh, people know that I don't deliver uh, nonsense. I would never waste. I mean, one thing in life there's no, no, that's, that's irreplaceable is your time. I would never spend 11, 12 years investigating something if I didn't truly believe that it happened and have confirmation by those in, in power and those who were directly involved that it did happen. Do you know what I mean? For sure. Uh, yeah, so I'd have to leave it at that. I mean, we have government officials high level telling us today the phenomenon's real. They're clearly under intelligent control. There must be beings involved. There's an intelligence behind it. They're saying that there's material and, and potentially bodies recovered. Could This could very well be one of those incidents that they're referring to. And so most of the witnesses are still alive. It happened in 1996. That's the most interesting part of the film is just how recent it all was. It's it's yeah. that, that human element that makes it so hard to dismiss whether or not people believe it literally happened like that, like something clearly happened. You can't look at those people and believe this is some sort of, you know, they saw swamp gas. And there was an overt attempt to, to, to silence the witnesses. I heard that time and time again. Every single one of them was threatened. So Brazil has such a rich history of some of the most bizarre UFO cases in ufology. Um, did any of those those uh, other stories, you kind of briefly touch on them in your film. Um, what was it like working with the Brazilian investigators hearing those stories? And is there any chance any, any of them might be the subject of an upcoming film? <laughs> That's funny you should ask that question because yes. Uh, Colores, 1977. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah, so the witnesses are, are still alive. Live, and we are, uh, as of next month, going to be professionally documenting those witnesses with the idea that we're going to do a piece on that because I heard, I heard Jacques Vallée was there investigating that case. And I heard compelling testimony that the Brazilian military filmed a very large object coming out of the Amazon. And then it's on. And I spoke to a gentleman, my partner, Marco Leal, spoke to a gentleman who saw it. So we know it exists. Jacques had talked about it. We would like to possibly go after that and go after that case. It's extraordinary. And there are a lot of photographs that the Brazilian military has released on that case. Yeah, that there's just enough content there for a miniseries, let alone a documentary. No, no question. Yeah, uh, fascinating case. So, so as you mentioned earlier, you've had a, a very long and respected career covering the UFO topic. And I'm just, uh, I'm wondering how the film industry has changed and how receptive they are to your work, particularly, say, before the phenomenon and then after. Like, is it easier to get funding? Are people more willing to hear your pitches? What's changed? Well, I don't get laughed at as much, which is nice. I mean, that less so with out of the blue and then, um, you know, my, my new neighbors, I live in Vermont now. And I was always reluctant to say what I do because I have to go on the defense. People just feel like it's necessary to either attack you or question your credibility or your integrity. And so a lot of times I just would like to just steer clear of that altogether. That's a lot less so, not just since the phenomenon came out, but since the 2017 New York Times article that revealed that secret Pentagon program, ATIP, and that official evidence was acknowledged and released. Uh, that changed uh, That changed a lot. The climate has changed. Um, very high level government officials have, even the head of NASA have basically said these things are real. No, not basically, they have fully said these things are real. It's not us. And we don't think it's Russia or China. So um, and then you have, and, and then I had the phenomenon come out right after that happened. That was, I mean, talk about a, 
just four, I had no idea. I was four years into producing the phenomenon when the New York Times article came out. I mean, I couldn't have been in a better place, you know. And of course, c- captured all that in, in all, all that was going on in in the doc, and uh, and that film, the phenomenon, was right place, right time. Finally, uh, only took me what six tries, <laughs> and um, so I would say better access so far better access and because we treat the topic seriously we don't ridicule witnesses we don't uh, present testimony from government and military officials in a mocking way uh just a very sort of serious sober look into what what's going on and i think that 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 has been that's 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 been noticed so i have better access and and slightly easier funding, I would say. Sorry, it was a very roundabout answer, but you know, that, that's exactly. 2017, pretty much. So I've, I've spoken to my share of filmmakers, particularly documentary filmmakers, and it's just, it, it wears on your soul. It ages you in dog years. And I can only imagine how difficult it is covering a topic like ufology. Um, what keeps you getting out of bed telling these stories? You've, you've done several mil- movies on the topic. Like what, what drives you to keep doing it? I'm guessing it's not the money. No, I never did this for the money. Yeah, in fact, I, I, I was digging ditches, painting houses, parking cars, uh, to, to just so I could continue investigating this. I'm an extremely curious person and I really want to know what's going on. And I feel like there's been so much progress in the last five years that instead of kicking back and relaxing, it's time to push harder. I really feel like we're on the precipice of, of, uh, of a massive revelation that could potentially uh, have a unifying effect on all of humanity. I, I believe that in my heart. I really do. I think that if we looked at this as an outside otherworldly intelligence that would unify the planet in a way that's never been unified. I, I just believe that. And um, that excites me to think that I could have a little tiny role in that process. And just to get back to moment of contact, um, it's, it's just packed with so much information. It's so dense. There's so much witness testimony. Uh, what are the, some of the things you wanted to get in the film and you just had to trim for time purposes? Photograph of the alien. <laughs> I'm kidding. I had to trim that out because we, we had to keep the, um, there's, it's a very complex story. As you had mentioned earlier, it's an incredibly complex story. There are lots of side stories, um, connections with the driver and his friend, Eric Lopes who the, the gentleman who grabbed the creature and died, the connection with, with his family to Eric Lopes's family, um, just lots of side stories. Uh, there was our meeting with a, a military general, a brigadier. His name was uh, Jose Carlos Barrera. We wanted to introduce that into the story because he privately confirmed for us that the case happened. We thought that'd be kind of, a, he died. A couple of years ago. So I figured it was okay for me to reveal that secret. I knew in the back of production for since 2014 that I had a level of confirmation from a brigadier, Air Force Brazilian gentleman, Jose Carlos Pereira, who confirmed for us that the case happened. And that is very significant because it kept, uh, it, it keeps you going when you have that kind of confirmation. And we, and I, I was going to include that in the film. I didn't, I mean, there were just, you know, like you said, it's just a very complex story. I mean, just even the media guy that was trying to get answers and they threatened to lock him in prison. Yeah. Um, you know, you can go down any, any number of these, but uh, we feel that we put together a very compelling uh, case that, uh, that this incident happened. Awesome. I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, James, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me. And how can people follow you and how can they support your film? I'm on Twitter and uh, they can Google Moment of Contact. It comes out October 18th. If anyone's in the Los Angeles area and they want to come to the premiere, it's October 17th. That's a Monday. 
at 6.30 to 7 p.m. 6.30, I'm aiming for people to get there at the LA Live Theater in downtown Los Angeles. LA Live. It's regal. And um, and hope to see you guys there. And will it be on any streaming platforms? Oh, it'll be on Amazon, iTunes, Google, Fandango, all, uh, Vimeo. Yeah. And then eventually we'll we, we'll be in touch with with a streamer of someone maybe like maybe like Netflix or HBO. But for right now, Amazon, iTunes, all those uh, TVOD transactional um, platforms. And just a quick follow up. I know when the phenomenon released, there was an additional version that not everybody uh, bought that had a little, few extra uh, yeah, DVD extras. I have, that, I have that here. I have that here too. Thanks for mentioning that. I believe that's on iTunes and Vimeo. Perfect. Okay, sounds yeah. great. Uh, All right, James. Uh, Amazon doesn't have it, but iTunes and Vimeo, they definitely have the extras and you get it for the same price. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for making such comp-